Okay, so just a reminder for this project, the Favorite Banner Sports Team project, we are using PowerPoint. And so to get there, you're going to click on this link here from the Materials section of Classroom, which will get you to this option right here. It's your at student.gckschools.com account, not your Google account, okay? I'm going to click on OneDrive. That's where I want to be. Okay, make sure we're staying focused and we're following along with me. So put phones and headphones away. Um, I'm going to need your next, you know, 10, 15 minutes of attention. All right, go to your multimedia design folder that we created at the start of the year. All that's probably there is your family presentation for right now. If it's not loading, just hit refresh on it. Um, okay, from your multimedia design folder, we're going to say new. PowerPoint presentation. New PowerPoint presentation. Give it a second to load. Okay, this is a good time to talk about. There are a lot of, there is a lot of this project that you can do from your iPad or from this screen here, the online version. But the charts and printing have to be done from the computer, has to be done from the full version. So before we open the desktop app, let's name our presentation. I want you to name it last name comma, first name, and then you need to either type favorite band or favorite team, okay, whichever option you're going for. If you're going for the band, great. If you're going for the team, great. Okay. Then now just click here where it says click to add title for now to save that title. Okay, while we're here, let's go ahead and attach the link out on Classroom so that you don't have to worry about attaching a link later. And so, Alec, I'm going to take over your computer. Thank you for allowing me to do that. So from here, what I want you to do is click Share. Okay, copy link. Hey guys, let's focus up. So I'm going to click share. I'm going to say copy link right here. I'm going to go out to classroom. I'm going to go to the favorite band or sports team assignment and say view assignment. Add or create link. Paste it in there. Add link. Don't push turn in until the end of the project work time, but the link is there. Any changes you make will save all as well. As long as that link is there, all you will have to do then when it comes time to turn this in is push turn in. Okay, do not push turn in at all. Okay, so come back to this screen. We're not going to type anything in right here just yet. This is today is just me demonstrating how to insert the charts. Tomorrow you'll have your time to start working and adding all the information you want to add. So please, again, phones and iPads away, headphones away, focus in, zero in so that I don't have to repeat myself, okay? All right. Now I'm going to say open in desktop app. Open PowerPoint, yes. You should get to this screen. I'll watch over here on my monitoring system to see, make sure everyone gets there. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone having issues getting in? I know I had some issues last. So what I need everyone to do for right now is I want you to click new slide. Create a new slide. Please, no side conversations. Click new slide. From here, we're going to start with the graphical chart. So I'm, I want everyone to say insert. Right here, say insert. First, you need to insert a new slide. Then you're going to say insert. Please be patient. Chart. And then I want you to not do anything. Don't click on anything. Just look on my screen. Okay, so these are several charts that you can insert through PowerPoint. Some of them are not charts that we are going to be messing with today um, or for this project. You want to choose a chart that is indicative of your information. So, for example, a column chart probably would be the best option if you're wanting to compare wins and losses over the last four or five years. Okay, if you're wanting to compare um, one group's album sales over another group's album sales. That would probably be a column chart, column chart or a bar chart. Bar chart just flips the information the other way. You can compare stuff to a different team, yep. The line chart might be kind of cool if you wanted to compare um, maybe an album, you're like an old soul, so you choose an album from 1985 and you want to chart like every five years how many albums that band has continued to sol sell of that specific record. Um, that would be something, a line chart, you, you would probably see a decline in sales, but you could at least see in millions of albums how many they've sold. Pie chart, probably not your best option if you're wanting to compare something from like your team to another team, right? Because that's not really what pie chart is for. It's for a part of a whole. So a pie chart in this example may be good for you look at the gross, like over the lifetime of the band, how much money they've made. And you compare like this much money came from this album. This much money came from that album. So you could kind of see in a pie, a pie representation um, a successful album over some of the maybe their less successful options. We are today are going to play with the column chart, so I just want you to pick column and say OK. When you do that, it pops up with a little chart spreadsheet. Okay. How many of you have worked in spreadsheets before? Spreadsheets save lives. That's my saying. I love, spread. I organize my life in a spreadsheet. If that shocks anyone, you don't know me very well. Um, anyway, that's just my side note. So today it pops up with a little Excel spreadsheet that's connected directly to this chart. So any changes you make up here will happen down here as well. So to start, you can see category one, two, three, four. Well, those are each little bunch of columns. And series one, two, three, four, those are the little columns within each bunch. We're going to start, we're going to just play with the last four years of our win-loss records for football. So category four would be 2019, and then we're going to work backwards. I, my brain works to go backwards from there. I don't know the records, so we're just going to put in fictional numbers. But you can see as you change these numbers, the numbers down here, the information down here changes for you, right? Series one would be wins, series two would be losses, tie, which isn't a thing in football, but we're going to put it there anyway for now. So everyone needs to be doing this, following along with me. I'm going to run out of time, but we're going to keep going. All right. So let's say I don't want to do four years. I only want to do three. To delete like 2016, for example, what you need to do is right click on the number two. So that would select the entire row. Right click on the number two, everyone. 
and you're going to say delete. That would get rid of the whole section and shift your entire graph accordingly. If I were to just delete out this information right here, you see how it still leave me a blank space? That's not what I want. So 2016, or I just would want to delete it. Again, we talked about ties aren't a thing, so I would right click on column D and say delete. Okay, right click on column D right here and say delete. Let's say, oh, I'm going to make a prediction on 2020. If I go in and add underneath, it's going to go ahead and give me a section here. And now I just want you to put in some random numbers. So let's say in 2017, we are 4 and 6. 2018, we we're 5 and 5. 2019, we were 6 and 4. And this year, we were 4 and 6. Or next year, we're going to be 4 and 6. I don't know. Okay, so put in some random numbers there. You're going to see that this information is going to adjust accordingly. To save and get out and continue editing, I'm just going to close, hit, hit the X right here. I'm going to say close. Okay. From here, I can make some changes. You better give your chart a title. Do not leave it say, saying chart title. I'm going to highlight that. And I might say wins versus losses. What are we looking at? Garden City High School. Okay. Let's say that I made an error and I, you know, last year we weren't four and six, we were three and seven. Or six and four, we were three and seven. I want to come up here with the chart selected. And I can say edit data right here. That's how I would fix and edit my data. Okay. Find your stopping point. Find your saving point. Save. Tomorrow we'll pick up with the last little bit of um, a chart. Okay. Okay. To finish this um, from the charts, let's say, so after you've edited your data, if you need to, let's say you want to change the style of the chart, you can change your chart styles up here. I would be aware though, some of these don't project well. So like this black one definitely doesn't project well, so I would not choose that as an option. Click the more arrow, you can see more like this does, just doesn't work. So um, choose something that's going to look good. You can also come over here and change the colors, and you'll see different colors based on whatever theme you choose but I would choose colors that match the colors of your team or the band if there's some colors that would match the band, okay? So this is the data chart. The other chart that you want to insert, so I'm going to hit here to home, new slide, is that hierarchy graphical organizational chart, okay? So I'm going to go insert. This time I'm going to say smart art. So you have several options here that are nice for um, other projects, so let's say you know you're doing science and you wanted to show the cycle of something or the process you used. Uh, maybe you're in English and you want to list out some main points from a book. There are some option, awesome options here to quickly create nice graphics for your PowerPoint. We are going to focus on the hierarchy, okay? And so, again, options. You will want to choose something that has hierarchy in it because you're going to want levels. So um, these top ones, the organization charts are nice, but you kind of have some stems off things and it's not exactly accurate. So I want a hierarchy over here. You can also choose horizontal, so it go left to right versus up to up and down. I'm going to, for now, choose um, this one. Looks great. I'm going to say okay. <coughs> From here, you can either edit the text within the boxes, or you can come up here where it says text pane and click that and edit the boxes here with bullet points. I prefer this option. I think it looks cleaner and it's a little easier to work in. So going with our example from class, I'm going to have Coach Hill. Under Coach Hill is Coach Bailey. Under Bailey would be Christian. Okay. We don't have a second person under Coach Bailey, so I can actually, if I backspace, that will move 
them up a level, promote them up a level. So now I can use that bullet point to say Coach Reich. Okay, but Coach Reich, there's not a bullet point under him. So if I push Enter and then Tab, that will get me demote somebody to be under Coach Reich. I didn't spell right correctly. All right, and so under Coach Reich, Sergio, and then I can come in here and put in Coach Base. Okay, let's say I have a second guy here. I know Caden was also under Coach Base. So you can put multiple people under each level. Yeah. Okay, you can put multiple people under each level if you need to. Again, if you like Coach Hill isn't the top, I actually want to come up here and add Coach Tone. Then I actually have to come in here and tab under, tab, tab. So I can add, move all of those over so that we have a, four levels to our organization chart. Okay, so you need at least three levels, um, head coach, assistant coaches, players, Recording artist or recording label manager artist, that's all up to you. When I'm finished with this, I can close this and I can always again edit my text here if I need to move those boxes around as I'd like, I guess. Um, or I can come up here and say text pane. Okay, I can also come in and edit what layout I chose right here. I can change, kind of add some different features here. Um, yeah, these 3D ones kind of look cool, but they're a little, it's too much. So you need to choose something that maybe is a little bit flatter uh, so that we can see it better. You can again change the colors as needed here if that's what you'd like. Okay, so again, you're going to want to have some sort of title here. So organizational chart of BCHS football or whatever your band or title team is. Okay. And those are the two charts that you're going to insert in for this project. Last thing is you will want to put in notes. So right here where it says notes, you move this up. And this is where I would type in the notes section um, of my slides. So let's say I come up here and I have a new slide and I've got Coach Hill. I'd want a picture of Coach Hill here. In the notes section, I'd want five sentences about Coach Hill, okay, and that is how I will be able to, you'll be able to see those notes, but your classmates won't be able to see them. All they'll be able to see is the picture and, the, and Coach Hill's name. The other thing is transitions and animations. Transitions are how we get from slide to slide, and so I would want to choose a transition that goes to all of my slides, okay, so transition to all of my slides. So I'd, I'd say apply to all right here. Um, advancing slide on mouse click. Animations are how I would get each individual thing onto the screen. So I'd have to select it. Let's say I want it to appear. Okay, and this one, I want to fade. So if I come in here to my presentation, this is what it would look like on your iPad. Okay, you're going to see current slide, what's coming up next, and if you have any notes. So as I click through, and I click, Coach Hill comes on, and then fade in, picture of Coach Hill, transition into my graphs, transition into my graphs. So it transitions between slide, um, animations, how each individual object comes in. The last thing is printing and I'll have a separate video on how to print.